I have this Wi-Fi switch from Tuya, which also has energy monitoring. So today we'll be looking at how we can actually control this particular switch using Home Assistant with something called as local Tuya integration. So what this local Tuya integration provides is that you don't need any kind of cloud integration to control this device. The device is locally controlled and you don't need any kind of cloud integration. Finally, we will look at how we can actually select the correct values for the current, power consumption as well as the voltage. So with this, let's get started. Now let's consider you already have a switch that is connected to the smart home app. And now we are going to see how we are going to connect this to Home Assistant using local TV. So for this, what we need is that we need to first install hacks. Now, if you have not installed Hacks, there's a video linked above here wherein I show you how to actually install Hacks in Home Assistant OS. The same link will be also present in the description below. So considering you have Hacks installed, I'm going to click on Hacks here. I'm going to go to Integrations and here I'm going to explore and download repositories. So I'm going to now click on Local Tuya or I'm going to search here for Local Tuya. And then I'm going to click on Download button here. So I'm going to select the latest version, whichever is there, and I'm going to click on down. So now this will actually get downloaded. And now what is going to happen is we will get a local to your integration service in our settings. So let's go to settings now and we're going to go to devices and services and we're going to click on add integrations. And now when I search for local to ya, you'll see this local to ya integration here. So here I'm not going to configure any kind of cloud API here. So do not configure cloud API account. I'm going to click on submit. Once you do that, click on finish and then go to your local to your integrations here. So once you click on this, you will get this configure button here. Now we are going to click on this configure here and we're going to say add a new device. We're going to click submit. And now this is the device ID that will be present here. You can see this particular device ID in the smart home app in the setting sections of your particular switch, as you can see. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to click submit. Now we are going to give this a name. So we're going to call this as a switch. OK, and now if you see here, there are two things here we need to provide. One is a device ID and one is a local key. Now this local key is something that we need. So how do we get this particular local key? So for this, what you'll have to do is we'll have to go to iot.tuya.com and here we will have to register for a particular developer account. Now I already have a developer account with this. So I'm going to sign into this. So this is a free account that you will have to create and we will only use this particular developer account to get that local key. We're not going to use this particular account to link it to Home Assistant. So I'm going to sign into my account now. So once you sign in, what you will have to do is you will have to go to this cloud section here. So let's go to this cloud section and I'm going to click here. Now in this, it's going to ask me to create a cloud project. So let me actually skip this help notification and I'm going to click on create cloud project. So now this is a project that you will have to create and I'm going to specify this as smart. I'm going to just specify some industries, say maybe smart home uh, development method. It could be anything custom or smart home. I'm just going to select smart home and the data center I'm going to select as EU central one. So central Europe data center. Okay. You can select even India or you can select Western Europe data center, depending on the data center in which you want this project to be created. So I'm selecting central Europe data center. Let's click create. And here I'm going to authorize some of these APIs. So now these are some of the default APIs that are present here, which are already selected for me. Now in the future, suppose if these APIs are not present, then you will have to search them from this list of APIs. But let's consider only the default list that we have here. So these are the set of APIs that needs to be present. So we are going to click on authorize. And that's it. So now we have this particular project here. So we open this particular project. Let's skip this. And here what we are going to do is we are going to go to devices. So once you go to the devices section, you're going to click on link to your app account. So this to your app account is basically a smart home app on which you have linked your to your devices. So I'm going to now open my app here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select add app account. And then I'm going to click on this plus icon and I'm going to say scan. 
and I'm now going to scan this particular QR code. So now with this, I'm going to confirm the login and here we get this particular options here. So what options are we getting here is that uh, linking method. I'm just going to keep it as automatic link and here I'm going to allow only the read permissions here. So let me say OK. Now what you'll see here is the smart plug that I have on to my smart home app. Okay, so this is the device ID. If you check this, this is exactly the same device ID that is present here, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this device ID. I'm going to copy this device ID. Now in case if you don't get this panel here, what you could do is you can click on this manage devices and you will get this panel back again. So I'm going to copy this now and then I'm going to go to cloud and then I'm going to click on API Explorer. So you have to click on this API Explorer. So this will open up into a new tab here now. Once you open this here, you will have to go to this device management section. So click on this and then I'm going to query device details. Let's click here and I'm going to now paste that device ID which I just copied. So I'm going to paste this here and I'm going to say submit request. So when I submit this request, you will get this particular response here. Okay. In this response, you will see this local key. This is what we want actually. So I'm going to copy this local key and I'm going to now go back here and I'm going to paste this particular local key. That's all that we need. You can now, if you want, even delete this particular app from the IoT platform of Tuya. You don't need this anymore. So now I'm going to now, after entering the local key here, I'm going to click on submit and then I'm going to say switch. Now here we need to give a particular friendly name. So I'm going to give this as to your yeah, switch and we need to specify values for the current as well as this current consumption voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my app now. I'm going to open this and when I open this here, Let's go to the electric section here. Here you will see that right now my current consumption is zero. My power is zero, but my voltage is around 333. So I know the voltage from here. So I can figure out it's somewhere around this value, like 233.5 is probably the value. So this is the value that you will have to figure out like which one it would be. And I'll tell you how to even debug this. Right now I'm going to select this. My current consumption is zero, which I don't know whether which is the right one because they are all like zero here. Just for now, I'll select this one and then I'm going to go to current consumption. The current consumption right now in the app is also showing as zero. That is a power in this case. So probably it is this value. So I'm going to select all of these things and we will see now if these values are correct. And if not, I'll show you also how to actually change these values. So I'm going to click on submit. And then I'm, I'm going to click on submit here. So now with this, we have one device been configured here. Let's see if this particular device works. So let's look if this device works and the device is on now. It's off. It's on again. It's off again. Okay. So this made sure that our device is working. Now let's look at if the current consumptions are correct. So I'm going to go to the developers tools here. I'm going to open this in a new tab. And I'm going to go to states and I'm going to search for my switch. So I'm going to search for the switch here. So this is the Tuya switch here. Now the current consumption and the current value is zero. The voltage seems to be correct according to the app now. Now to debug this, the best way to do is connect some kind of a device to this. So I'm going to connect actually my charger. And now let me see in the app, the voltage is changing. So if you see here also, the voltage is reflecting. The current consumption is 10.9, which is not actually the correct consumption. And the current is around zero here, which right now in the app, it is showing 103. So what we need to do is we need to check if these values are correct. This is definitely not correct because it's going 10.5, 10.7, but the power is around 11.1. So for this, what we'll do is we will have to go back to settings. Let's go back to the configure button here in Tuya local. I'm going to say edit a device, click on submit. And this is the device that we have linked now to home assistant. Click on submit, keep this settings the same and then click on submit. 
finally here when we reach let's look at the different value that we can select so in this we cannot kind of figure out which one it is right so what i'm going to do is i'm actually now going to remove this particular device you don't need to do it but i'll tell you a better way to do this stuff so i'm going to now remove this particular device from here i'm going to say delete and i'm now going to reconfigure this device so i'm going to click on configure add a new device i'm going to select that device id i'm going to specify that local key that we copied and I'm now going to give this a switch name. I'm going to click on submit. Click on this. And then now when I give this a name like switch, in the current section, you'll see now there's a difference in values. Now this difference in values that you see here is somehow corresponding to the values that we have here. So I can see that this we have as 91 and this we have as 100. So I'm assuming this 100 is close to the current that we have because it is showing right now like 97 and 90 around 100. So I'm going to select this for current. I'm going to select for the power consumption. It's like 11 point, which does not correspond to any of these values here. But let's try maybe it's this one. So this is the value that I'm selecting for current consumption. And then finally, I'm going to select the voltage, which is definitely this one because it's like 232.1 so 232.1 so i'm going to select this i'm going to click on submit and i'm going to click on submit back again what i'm going to do now go back to developer tools i'm going to refresh this page and then i'm going to search for switch so if you see now the switch is showing that the current is around 102 but it is 106 here which itself is not correct it looks like the value that we gave for the current is actually the power because it is like 111 here and it is 111 here. While the value that we have given for the current consumption is actually corresponding to the current, leave aside the decimal point. So I'm going to switch this right now. Now to switch this, what you'll have to do is go back here. I'm going to say configure, edit device, select that device, click on continue here and submit. And then when you have this, I'm going to switch these things. So I'm going to set this to the 18 and this one to 19. Once you do this, let's click on submit. So I'm going to submit here and this is now configured. So let's go back and check this and it's turning on and it's turning off. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is let's go to developer tools here and I'm going to search for this. Oh, so right now it is actually showing the correct value. So it is showing the current as 101 and the power as 11.5. So this is how you will have to debug in case if you don't know which values to select. So using local Tuya, we have now integrated it with Home Assistant so that they can run locally on your network. So today we saw how we can actually control Tuya switches using this local Tuya integration in Home Assistant. Now, if you want to buy this particular switch, there are links into the description below. And if you like this particular video and it has given you some help to actually do this local integration, make sure to hit that like button as well as hit the subscribe button for more such videos to come in the future. Till then, take care and see you in my next one.